So now that my report is started, I am going to just delete that table that was created by the wizard, expand the section, go to the toolbox, and drag the map control onto the form. This launches a wizard, and the first thing in the wizard, I have to choose a source for the spatial data. Now, we have the options of using the map gallery, which is included with reporting services, or we can choose ESRI shape files. And for more information on that, you can look on books online. We'll have some ideas on where to get some additional shape files. Or we can use the spatial data type within SQL Server, it's Excel. For this particular example, we're just gonna use the built-in map gallery. And for the map gallery, I have a couple of different options. I can either choose states and look at counties, for example, Florida, or I can choose three between three different options for the United States as a whole. USA by state, exploded, or by state inset. I'm gonna choose exploded and click next. The next thing we have the ability to do is to move this around so it looks good in our final report we have the ability to change the map resolution and this determines how many data points are needed on the map to actually get the resolution that you want um, for the best quality of course that potentially has a performance hit so you have to adjust that depending on your needs and we're going to leave it right now at best quality. The other thing we have the option to do is to add a Bing map layer so if you check that, then you can see um, the map layer that would appear. You have the ability to choose between road or area or a hybrid of the two. We're going to leave that off for now, and you always have the ability to add that later as well. So I'm going to choose next, and then we have to choose a map visualization. We can choose basic map, which is just showing us areas, and it doesn't actually show us any sort of um, visualization of any quantity data, such as sales amount or number of orders. Or we can choose the color analytic map, which we can choose one type of data, such as sales amount, and we can turn states a variety of colors based on how well we're doing selling in those particular states. Or the last option is a bubble map. And in this case, we can actually show two different data elements. So we can compare our sales amount and the number of orders that we have by state. So this is the one that we're going to choose for this example. I'm just going to go ahead and choose the data set that I created when I pasted in my query. And now we have to match up the spatial data set fields to our query fields. And we have the option of using either the state number, which is just the states in order, this is built into reporting services, or the state code, or the name itself. And since our query has a state name, we're going to check that. And now we can pick state province name. And we can see visually that we're hooking up our state province name to the maps state name. Click Next, have a variety of themes we can choose from, from corporate to ocean. I'm just going to leave it at generic. And then what are the bubbles going to represent? So the bubbles in our case are going to represent the number of orders that we have by state. So we're going to just count our sales order number. And then we can check use polygon colors to visualize data. And here we have to pick a field as well. And this is where we're going to sum our sales amount to show amounts of sales by state visually. Another thing that we have to choose from is our color rule. And right now it's showing green, yellow, red, so a lower number 
would look good, and a higher number would indicate red or um, poor. So that's actually opposite of what we need for this example because we're looking for a larger sales volume. So we're going to switch that to red, yellow, green. We also have many other options. You can choose whether or not to show display labels and what to show on those labels. We're going to leave that off. So I'm going to click Finish. And now our map is ready to go. And we can preview that. And now we have the ability to see our sales amount in ranges by state, comparing that to the number of orders that we re received for those states. And so some things to note, not very many orders in Minnesota, a, a lower sales range amount. But you can also see some interesting things like a large number of orders for Florida with a mid-range of sales amount, but compare that to a lesser amount of orders, but actually more sales coming from the state of Oregon. Now there's many things, many, many properties that are available for these maps. And just to show a couple, if we click on the map, we can actually see the map layer. And here's where if I want to go ahead, I can add the additional layer to include the Bing, the Bing layer. I can also again look at my color rule which I had stated as red being the start color, yellow the middle color, and green as the end color. I could also change my bucket count from five to something like seven. And then what this will do is actually have other gradients of color. Um, now we'll see seven. So if I run this again, I can see the additional ranges and the additional colors that appear in the map. And we can go ahead and we can change the um, what appears within the map itself. We can move this outside of the map. We could delete it altogether. Since we already have the legend over here, we could um, customize the display of the labels. Many, many, many other properties that you can explore. And so I just wanted to thank you for taking the time to watch this video today on an introduction to maps in SQL Server 2008 R2.